you are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. Charles Norman Shea came into the military when he was drafted in 1943. He is a Penobscot Indian, and he was assigned in England to the 1st Infantry Division, the 16th Infantry Regiment, which was preparing in England for the D-Day invasion. Charles arrived in England as a replacement, of course. The 1st Division had already fought in North Africa and in Sicily, and so there were plenty of veterans and experienced non-commissioned officers and officers in the 1st Infantry Division. Charles was brand new. He was a young guy, about 19 years old, newly assigned as a medic. The 1st Division knew six months before D-Day that they had been selected by General Bradley to be the assault division on Omaha Beach. So their training was intense. It was a lot of physical fitness. It was a lot of force marches. It was a lot of marksmanship. It was a lot of going over and over and over again, the detailed and specific plans of where each landing craft would land and what the terrain looked like and all that sort of thing. And of course, Charles as a medic was not only trained in basic first aid and life saving, but all kinds of emergency aid. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well trained, well equipped and battle hardened. He will fight savagely. The 16th Infantry Regiment was the assault regiment on Omaha Beach. And what that means is they're the first. They're the very first ones. Almost everything that could go wrong with a military operation went wrong with the D-Day operation. It was postponed today because of bad weather. The weather was iffy, but they sent them in anyway. It was a terrible decision that General Eisenhower had to make. The soldiers were in their landing craft. Charles was in his landing craft, very cramped space, about 34 men that are aboard this LCVP, and they went up onto the beach. Things ...on the soil of Western Europe. Another of the great decisive battles of world history has been joined. The coxswain that was driving the boat, he said, I have to drop the ramp, you have to leave because I'm marooned on an underwater obstacle. When the ramp went down, of course, the men that were standing in front, many of them were killed immediately by machine gun fire, all arms, or mortar fire. And uh, those that uh, made it into the water, some of them were too heavily loaded with equipment, and many of them sank immediately into the water because I landed up to my chest and the men that were loaded with this ammunition, they just sank, there's no help for them. You could not help them. The German defenses had not been suppressed as was planned. One of the things that many people who visit here don't understand is that German defenses did not point out the sea. The Germans knew they couldn't destroy the Allied fleet. All of the defenses, all of the guns, created a crossfire across the beach so that our soldiers coming off the landing craft would have to go through multiple belts of direct fire. Of course, there's mortar fire, artillery fire. There's no cover and concealment. They landed at low tide, so they have about a quarter mile of wet tidal flat that they've got to get across carrying all their gear. I ran up across the dry beach to the shoulder of the area and there I found a spot where I could operate as a medic and treat the wounded. I happened to glance back to the sea and I saw that there were many wounded men laying on the beach. The tide was coming in very fast and if nobody came to their help, they were doomed to drown. So I returned to the water and tried to help these men by rolling them over on their backs, grabbing them under their armpits, and pulling them up to the safety of the water level that I knew would be safe from drowning. Charles was pinned down for six to eight hours. He was lying on his stomach and crawling through wet sand, trying to get 
to wounded soldiers and save them. He exhausted his medical supplies almost immediately, he continued to do that until he was literally exhausted and just could not move anymore. After horrific casualties, the 16th Infantry Regiment, aided and abetted by many other units, was able to take their objectives on Omaha Beach and clear a way for the follow-on forces that were gonna land there. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. Charles continued to serve with the Big Red One, the 1st Infantry Division, and the 16th Infantry Regiment as a frontline medic for the rest of the war. He fought in all the major battles that liberated Europe from the Nazis. At the very end of the war, he was on patrol and the patrol was captured and he was held prisoner for about six or seven weeks before he was liberated by an American unit and the war ended. I'm fortunate that I can be here. And when I celebrate it here in this cemetery at Omaha, it's very difficult for me to, to keep my tears back. I, uh, I have many friends that are laying here buried on Omaha Beach, and I really feel sorry for them, but there is no help for them. They have paid the ultimate price, and it is an honor for me to be here and to celebrate them and to know that they are, at least have been found and identified and that they have found a perfect resting place. You honor us with your presence and you continue to remind us all of the bravery and sacrifices made by all who landed on these beaches.